Welcome back. Those bellwether semi-stocks living up to their name as we see deep declines in NVIDIA and some others. Uh, it, that's sending today's sell-off in the Nasdaq 100 into the 500-plus point territory. Seema Modi has more in today's tech check. What gives, Seema? Semiconductor sector as a whole, actually, worst day since uh, July 17th. And even when you look at the Nasdaq 100, nearly... 40% of the losses for the Nasdaq 100 are coming from the semiconductor stock. So clearly these chip names are getting caught up in what's happening today. One data point investors are chewing on is Google's CapEx, how much it's spending on technical infrastructure and chips. The fact that the hyperscaler did not change its spending targets for the year is raising some questions as to whether Meta, Amazon, Microsoft will do the same. Goldman Sachs and Sequoia have both warned in recent weeks that bigger CapEx budgets may not be justified. And that is a potential headwind for the chip makers that rely on that spend. NVIDIA, which sells its chips to all the hyperscalers, you'll see that stock is down about 5% right now. Its competitor, AMD, down a similar amount. Broadcom, which is working with Google to develop its own in-house chip, is seeing its stock fall by over 6%. And then in the analog space, Texas Instruments is holding on to some gains here after reporting better than expected second quarter earnings on the call. CEO Haviv Alon said its U.S. operations makes it a geopolitical winner. 75% of its business is based here in the U.S. So one stock here holding up. Earnings, of course, will play a more important role in understanding how strong the demand story. Tonight, equipment player KLA Tencore will report. And City points to its strong China exposure actually as a tailwind, though recognizes the comments made by former President Donald Trump as a potential risk. So um, we'll, we'll look for those results tonight, guys. It's hard to imagine in a world where the CapEx budget that was reported by Alphabet is somehow going to be not good enough or, you know, in some ways not robust enough to carry this trade all the way through. Just how much do these hyperscalers, these industrial level type spenders on IT, how much do they have to spend to make the chip trade better or more attractive or keep the momentum going on. Well, it's all about context, right? These companies uh, in the chip space have run up so far, so fast on the prospect of more spending by hyperscalers. So any sign that they're either pulling back or being a bit more conservative on CapEx going forward is being seen as uh, a potential headwind for these companies. All right. Sima Modi with the latest on chips. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to explore NVIDIA's pivotal role in the development of self-driving cars. Autonomous vehicles have long been a dream of science fiction, but thanks to companies like NVIDIA, that dream is rapidly becoming a reality. NVIDIA is renowned for its graphics processing units, or GPUs, and AI innovations. These technologies are at the heart of their contributions to self-driving cars, encompassing hardware, software, and collaborations with leading automotive manufacturers. NVIDIA's journey into the automotive sector began with their GPU technology, initially popular in the gaming industry. Recognizing the potential of GPUs in processing the immense data required for autonomous driving, NVIDIA shifted its focus towards developing specialized hardware for this purpose. This transition was marked by the launch of the NVIDIA Drive platform, an end-to-end -end solution designed to power autonomous vehicles. At the core of the NVIDIA Drive platform is the Drive AGX system, which includes powerful GPUs and AI processors capable of handling the vast computational demands of self-driving cars. The Drive AGX system is built on NVIDIA's Xavier and Orin system on a chip processors. These processors deliver high performance while maintaining energy efficiency, a crucial factor for electric and autonomous vehicles. For example, the Orin processor can perform 254 trillion operations per second, making it one of the most powerful automotive processors on the market. On the software side, NVIDIA offers Drive OS, an operating system specifically designed for autonomous driving. This OS integrates advanced AI algorithms for perception, planning, and control, enabling vehicles to navigate complex environments safely and efficiently. Additionally, NVIDIA provides Drive AV, a comprehensive autonomous vehicle software stack, and Drive 9, which enhances the in-car experience with AI-based capabilities. Central to NVIDIA's approach to self-driving cars is artificial intelligence and machine learning. These technologies are essential for processing and interpreting data from a multitude of sensors, including cameras, LiDAR, and radar. 
NVIDIA's GPUs are optimized for AI workloads, allowing for real-time data processing and decision-making. NVIDIA's AI algorithms enable vehicles to perceive their surroundings accurately. This involves identifying objects such as other vehicles, pedestrians, and road signs, and understanding the environment in 3D. Deep learning models allow for continuous improvement in perception accuracy, which is crucial for the safety and reliability of autonomous vehicles. Accurate localization and mapping are also essential for autonomous driving. NVIDIA's solutions use AI to create detailed, high-definition maps and to keep the vehicle precisely localized within its environment. This ensures that the car knows its exact position and can navigate accordingly. Once the vehicle has perceived its environment and localized itself, it must plan a safe and efficient path. NVIDIA's AI-driven path planning algorithms take into account various factors such as traffic, road conditions, and safety regulations to determine the optimal route. The control systems then execute these plans, adjusting the vehicle's speed, steering, and braking as needed. NVIDIA's impact on self-driving cars is amplified through strategic partnerships with major automotive manufacturers and technology companies. Collaborations with companies like Mercedes-Benz, Audi, and Toyota have been instrumental in integrating NVIDIA's technology into real-world vehicles. These partnerships leverage NVIDIA's expertise in AI and computing to accelerate the development and deployment of autonomous vehicles. For example, NVIDIA and Mercedes-Benz have announced a plan to develop a software-defined architecture for future vehicles. This architecture will enable over-the-air updates and new AI-based services, ensuring that vehicles can continuously improve their autonomous capabilities even after they have been sold. Despite significant advancements, the path to fully autonomous vehicles is fraught with challenges. Safety, regulatory hurdles, and public acceptance are major obstacles that need to be addressed. NVIDIA is actively involved in tackling these issues by participating in industry standards groups and working closely with regulatory bodies to ensure that autonomous vehicles meet the highest safety standards. Looking ahead, NVIDIA's role in the evolution of self-driving cars is poised to grow even further. The company continues to innovate with its drive platform, integrating more advanced AI technologies and expanding its partnerships within the automotive ecosystem. As the industry moves closer to realizing the dream of fully autonomous vehicles, NVIDIA's contributions will undoubtedly be a driving force in making this vision a reality. One of the industrial revolution that I was part of started about 30, 40 years ago, which is producing something that's invisible. And we call it, as you know, um, well, back then it was nobody imagined that you could, you could actually produce something like that and sell it, but today, software industry is a $3 trillion industry. And so that is our industrial revolution, which then led to this one. And this new industrial revolution takes raw material, that raw material is data. We process it, we refine it, and we distill it down into an intelligence, a digital intelligence that embeds all of this knowledge and intelligence into these tokens. And these tokens are what you enjoy when you're interacting with ChatGPT. All these words that are being produced, that are generated, the next word that's being generated, comes out of the computer as a token, as a floating point number. And so this new, this new thing that's being produced has great value because it encodes intelligence, it, it embeds intelligence. And we're now producing at a fairly large volume. This input, the input of, our, of this new industry requires your output. What co comes out, what goes into this new intelligence generator is the output of your AC generator. So your AC generator produces electricity that goes into our AI generator, which produces floating point numbers we call intelligence, digital intelligence. And because, the, because this digital intelligence, as we know, has so much value to humanity, the consumption of digital intelligence is gonna go up. And we're producing it fairly cost effectively. And so, uh, this is going to be the next driver of fairly significant energy consumption all around the world. Now the challenge for us is to figure out how to go and create that energy. 
And one of the things that, that you should keep in mind is that today's energy is built around where society is, where, where population is, where the grid is. Uh, in the future, you'll, you'll probably generate electricity and generate energy um, uh, near grids and, and not near grids. And, and that's something to consider as you, as, you, um, as you do this because you have to keep in mind that, that AI doesn't care where it goes to school. It doesn't have to be near population. We consume it near population. And so we're still gonna require a lot of electricity and a lot of energy um, near population, but it can, you can also uh, be, create uh, quite productive energy you know, off the grid, uh, not, not off the grid, but away from the grid today. Yeah. So it's interesting, and there was a, one, I think, of your underlying thoughts on this is that, I agree with, as you make this computing power more and more cost effective, maybe bending the curve down, but it's actually then generating even more demand. Do you see, do you see a limit to that? Do you see a place where, you know, there's you've created so much intelligence that now you're looking at just marginal development, or do you continue to see this almost exponential curve, or mm -hmm. do we just not know? Well, I, I would say that today's energy consumption is limited by um, the energy that's, that's required to move atoms, mm -hmm. move things, right? You translate electrical energy to uh, mechanical energy. That's one, one use. Uh, another use, of course, is translating it to um, electromagnetic energy, light, and so, so you're, that's the and 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 the, the uh, the limits of that consumption is kind of limited to humans, the number of people. Mm -hmm. You know, you're probably indexed to population, is my guess. But the interesting thing is that the next thing that you're indexed to is. Uh, the value of intelligence. It's not, in, it's not indexed to population. Mm -hmm. And, and um, uh, it's probably indexed to industry size, which ultimately has some index to population, but it's indirectly so. So the industry size that we will now serve is about $100 trillion. And so you, you take the 100, because that's every industry. Every industry requires intelligence. And so the question is, what is digital intelligence as a proportion of those industries that would be considered to be a value. And then you take that digital intelligence and you now, uh, in, order to, in order to create that digital intelligence, you need electric energy directly. And so now, now you're gonna be indexed to, um, to a larger percentage of the world's industries. My, my guess is that, that um, uh, you know, energy consumption will go up um, quite substantially, but, the, the implication of the intelligence that is created would reduce waste, which reduces, um, you know, hopefully less carbon, uh, hopefully less waste, material waste, and um, uh, hopefully as a result, greater productivity, which as a result increases the size of industries. And so I, I think um, uh, the, the future for digital intelligence is quite, ho quite high and therefore the, the future for uh, energy is quite high. Well, and this, uh, I think it's probably a feedback loop back to our own industry in terms of how we use a sliver of that intelligence to make our energy production more efficient yeah, right? Right. and our energy distribution. So, so maybe let's, let's drop down a level and, and focus on our sector for a little bit here. Uh, Jensen, I know we referred from your team that you are really building up a lot more of energy expertise uh, among your team, which is terrific. Uh, I know a number of us are engaged with your team in areas like smart meter design and mm -hmm. where should that next generation of smart meters go. Yeah. Uh, more broadly, a number of us are you know, deploying AI across our companies, right? yeah. and all sorts of operational uh, you know, sort of functions. So just love your thoughts about where you see those applications within our sector, since you're clearly now taking you know, a, a closer look at that. Uh, since I, I, mean, I agree with you, the thesis that the more we can use these tools to be more efficient, the better it is in terms of our overall mission to provide power reliably, safely, affordably, and importantly, making sure it's clean power that we're yeah. providing. So anyway, thoughts on, on how you'd see us, if you were in our shoes, how would you be applying the technologies for, uh, for better operations? You could use, you could use AI uh, inside the company to, 
to uh, be more productive, eliminate waste, go faster, you know, do more with less, which is what fundamentally intelligence does. Uh, uh, however, what what is likely the greatest return, the greatest ROI, the greatest impact, will likely be applying AI in the delivery of the energy itself, the provisioning of the energy, the grid. And in order to, to have an, a smart grid, an AI intelligent grid, you first have to have it be a software defined smart grid. Mm -hmm. And so, so the work that we're doing together, uh, uh, let's see, the, I don't know if utility, utility data um, is in the room, but, but um, uh, we're, we're working together on, on smart meters and AI meters uh, and uh, working with you and, mm -hmm. and um, uh, Portland General uh, in, in, in deploying uh, um, AI computers integrated into the, into the grid. Well, ultimately, here, here's, here's my thinking that, that um, it will likely be the case uh, that the grid will not only become uh, uh, smart, uh, but, but it will likely become, uh, would, would of course bring in energy from a whole lot of different other sources, including the consumers. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I can totally imagine the grid from a software abstraction perspective look kind of like an app store. And, and the app store, uh, which is a smart, the smart grid, uh, has all, this, all these uh, sources and sinks, sources and sinks, and it has to be smart about uh, connecting sources and sinks. And, and um, if somebody wants to get onto the smart, into the app store, uh, obviously there's, uh, it's software defined and, and that person wants to uh, maybe sell some of their excess energy, maybe it's in, the, in their home battery, maybe it's in their car, whatever, and they would like to sell their, their energy to some of the neighbors, um, that, process would need someone to orchestrate that process, like an app store. Mm -hmm. And so uh, all of you would become um, uh, owners of app stores. And instead of app stores, they're actually energy stores. And because you have to connect sources and sinks, it's exactly like Uber, mm -hmm. which has to connect destinations and riders. And so in a lot of ways, all of your power grids today which is really just a distribution network, mm -hmm. is gonna become a smart network like the internet. And there's gonna be a layer on top of it that's kind of like Uber, kind of like an app store. And if that's the case, and you go, oh, that's sensible. If that's the case, then how do you make that happen? Well, the way to make that happen is smart meters, mm -hmm. um, uh, AI, you know, and it has to be software defined. And so, so I kind of read them through it, uh, like, you know, kind of from a computer science perspective, but this is a great opportunity for all of you. Your business model can really be transformed.